In a previous video, I had given you an idea about the main memory and I had told you a little bit about its properties. In this video session, I am going to talk about the different types of main memory. Mainly there are two types of main memory. One is called as the DRAM or the dynamic random access memory. The other is called as SRAM or the static random access memory. So first what I will do is I will go ahead and discuss the DRAM or the dynamic random access memory. In a computer, every information is represented as ones and zeros. So what this DRAM does is using a combination of a capacitor and a transistor, it uses it to represent either a one or a zero. The principle is quite simple. If the capacitor has charge, it is considered to be a one. If the capacitor is discharged, it is considered to be a zero. So using a combination of a capacitor and a transistor, one single bit is represented in the dynamic RAM. Now, but since you use a capacitor, you have a small problem. The capacitor tends to lose its charge or gets discharged very fast. In order for the capacitor to be able to retain its charge, it must be refreshed regularly or periodically about 50 to 100 times per second. This is done so that the data is not lost. So what this brings us to is, this tells us that we need a circuit which will keep refreshing the data frequently and that circuit is called as the refresh circuit. So what it does is it rewrites the data many number of times per second so that the data does not change or the data remains the same. Now what are the major properties of DRAM? It is much cheaper. It is quite small and compact in size. Okay. It's got much larger capacity as compared to a static RAM. Okay. Now generally when I talk about main memory. Okay. Suppose I say my laptop or PC has 2 GB, 4 GB, 8 GB, 16 GB of main memory. I am actually talking about the DRAM because in almost all PCs and laptops, your main memory is going to be made out of the DRAM. Now some of the drawbacks, it's got a shorter data lifetime because it needs to be frequently refreshed. It is much slower compared to the SRAM. Okay, here we are comparing super high speeds. It's not like walking and going on a bike. It is very different speeds at a very high level. So what I'm trying to tell you here is when I talk about main memory or RAM, I'm always talking about the DRAM. I've already told you it can be designed extremely compact or tight and you can have very small chips having a large capacity to store data. Therefore, it's small in size. It is less expensive. But the drawback I would say is it naturally consumes more power because of this refresh circuit. Now this is an example of a Samsung 16 GB memory chips. So each of this is 4 GB chips and here if you see the golden line this is inserted okay into the slot in the PC motherboard. Now let me talk about the SRAM. SRAM simply stands for static RAM. Now if you look at the Design of a dynamic RAM, I told you it consists of a capacitor and a transistor. Whereas a SRAM consists of an electronic circuit called as a latch or a flip-flop made up of transistors. The easiest way to think of this flip-flop or latch is, think of it as a switch. If the switch is on, the value 1 is stored. If the switch is off, the value 0 is stored. So billions and billions of flip-flops are created or are installed on a 
chip okay that's the way to look at it now what is the meaning of the word static the word static indicates that this particular type of random access memory does not require a refresh circuit because the flip-flop is quite stable if it is one it will not simply flip to zero until you apply some process to change the behavior now a new word I have introduced you here called as cache memory. So far I had told you only there is a secondary memory, there is a main memory and then there is a CPU memory. But what happens is the CPU memory is super super fast whereas the RAM or the main memory is not as fast as the CPU memory. So what the designers did is they did something like this. So suppose this is your CPU okay this is my main memory okay and this is my hard disk all right so it takes a certain amount of time for data go to, to go from ram to the cpu because the speed of the cpu is very very fast compared to the ram that's why they thought between the cpu and the ram let us introduce a small super fast memory called as the cache so what this cache memory does is Suppose the size of this is 1 GB. This may just be 512 kilobytes. So the frequently used instructions and data which are mostly required by the CPU very often are kept in this particular cache. This speed is almost close to the CPU speed. That's why the computer is able to execute faster. So this is known as the cache memory which is almost always made up of SRAM. It is very very fast very reliable as things in life something which is fast has to be expensive it is expensive it's got a long life now you may think where this is useful for example if you're using your digital cameras okay you require very fast memory because especially if you are recording a video which has say 64 MB or whatever higher resolution it consumes a lot of memory very fast and the memory go is got to be super fast to capture all the information from the outside world. So that's why if you see in your high-end mobile phones, in your digital cameras, you will extensively be using the SRAM. So I'll just show you a small picture of an SRAM chip. This is a Hyundai SRAM chip. Okay, so it just, just gives you an idea how this chip looks. Later on, I am going to give you links to videos developed by third parties which will give you an excellent, excellent idea about the inner working of DRAM and SRAM for those of you who are more curious and interested.